My name is Sanjeev Bhatt. I work with Merrill Life Sciences as Vice President Corporate Strategy, and I'm located at Bombay. These are the interesting days uh, for MedTech, not just in India, but worldwide. Uh, I'd like to reflect on you know, how uh, the world is changing in order to improve healthcare. Uh, never before so much technology was available to treat such a myriad of you know, disease condition. Today we are able to treat infectious diseases, lifestyle related diseases, and we are able to treat diseases of the age. So today is the best you know, time from the medtech point of view, where healthcare access is you know, becoming more and more aware, uh, available to worldwide population. Global medtech market is now in access of $400 billion and uh, growing at a good pace of more than about 10%. Indian medtech, you know, is now slotted at close to about 50 to 60 billion dollars, and it is expected to grow at the rate of about 20 percent over the next five, six years. Merrill Life Sciences is an Indian medtech company now globally present in more than about 100 countries worldwide. The company was uh, founded in year 2007, and we are spread across four business verticals. We have a range of product in vascular interventional technologies. We work in orthopedics. We have products and technologies in endosurgical range of products. And we also do in vitro diagnostics. Currently, the company has more than 4,000 people associated with it. And we are present in now close to about 145 countries worldwide with a very robust portfolio of more than 100 unique technological platforms. Uh, the company actually is founded on the basis of innovation and R&D. We realize that uh, from the Indian medtech point of view, uh, unless we innovate and unless we uh, bring in this whole culture of indigenous R&D in medical device technology, we will not be able to stand in front of uh, the developmental work that is going on elsewhere in the world. Also, it was more pertinent. All these years, uh, the, con the country has been dependent on technologies which have been imported either from USA or from Europe or elsewhere. Uh, here at Merrill, our R&D is more, you know, from the characteristic of a, of a person who has a nature of being childlike, thrifty, curious, and at the same time, uh, where innovation uh, stands at the forefront. The way we work is we identify an unmet clinical need, and we build, uh, you know, on products and technologies uh, to serve that unmet clinical need. One of the, uh, you know, crucial thing that we have done uh, over the last seven years of, you know, of Merrill's existence is while we worked uh, quite a bit on next generation drug looting stent, in order to move the technological needle, uh, we innovated in the direction of bioresorbable scaffolds. Uh, Miras 100 is one such unique example of a polylactic acid-based vascular scaffold, which has an ability to degrade in two to three years. Um, Miras 100 is a bioresorbable vascular scaffold. The strut thickness in Miras 100 is 100 micron. It is in fact the next generation bioresorbable scaffold. The drug eluted from the surface of this scaffold is sirolimus. And uh, this is basically meant for treatment of patients who present with coronary artery disease and require angioplasty and stenting. Bioresorbable nature of Miras 100 allows it to fully degrade in a period of two to three years. So this is a unique advantage over the metal-based drug looting stents that we have currently. The product has been approved by the CDSCO in India. The product is also now approved by the European Union, so we, it is a C-marked product. And uh, very shortly, you know, Merrill will decide the launch on, of Meris uh, Currently, bioresorbable scaffolds, or let me put it in another way, uh, currently coronary artery disease, occlusive coronary artery disease has been treated using metal-based uh, stents. More commonly used are drug looting stents, which are on, you know, metal-based based platform. Uh, these patients uh, who receive uh, metal-based stents are, uh, you know, basically will have a prosthetic device permanently implanted in their coronary arteries. 
it is very intuitive to have over a period of time, especially if the patient is younger in age, uh, to have a scaffold which will degrade over a period of time. And this is with an intention that as the age progresses, the patient will have progression of the disease. And uh, it, is, it is very normal not to have anything left behind. So the quest for a fully degradable bioresorbable scaffold has been around. And in that, uh, several technologies have been, you know, trying to establish their clinical safety and efficacy. Miras 100 was developed especially with an intention to address this unmet clinical need. It's a true 100 micron scaffold, uh, which has serolimus eluted from the surface of the scaffold and is timed to degrade over a period of two to three years. Uh, now, over the three years of clinical follow-up in a large clinical trial, we know that Miras 100 has lower rate of target lesion revascularization, uh, which is just under 2%. Whereas with a metal-based platform, the target lesion re revascularization rates are usually at the rate of 5 to 6%. And sometimes even it might be up to 10%. One of the ubiquitous problem of stents has been stent thrombosis. In Meris 100, we have seen zero scaffold thrombosis in all these patients over three years. So, the device has not just established its efficacy, but it's also established its uniqueness in terms of being extremely safe. 